the bull market is like uh, hectic. Like uh, everyone is like getting so crazy. P people are reaching out to you. People are reaching out to your friends and family trying to get in touch with you. Like I really didn't like that about the bull market was like everyone wanted to be my friend. Everyone was acting fake. Um, you know, what's the point of money if everyone is acting fake and uh, trying to get shit from you? So, uh, so yeah, like the bear market, I actually prefer, um, it's, it's a little bit, it's more quiet. Bear markets are for evolution, right? They, they make the space stronger by killing all the weak people and, uh, projects and making them leave the space. They, they'll probably return later when things, things are better, but, um, that's actually needed uh, to concentrate capital and talent, um, and users within the, the most quality and the best products you know i know it's a bear market and it can be hard it can be very boring mm -hmm. uh, but find some reason to you know to stay involved to keep up with what's happening uh, because it's gonna end up putting you in a better spot um once things start to improve with the macro climate hi everybody this is vera boren with you on my creators podcast uh today we are talking with jiho from axi infinity jiho is a co-founder and today we have, i would like to talk to jiho about the project and also about personal story because it's very cool to be to be a co-founder of uh, the biggest uh, web3 game or one of the biggest web3 games hi jiho hey thanks for having me thank you and um Guys, if you're watching us, please subscribe to my YouTube uh, because there are more videos coming with uh, top people from Web3 and AI and uh, tech industry. So, uh, hi. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you both about your personal story and about the product, but maybe you could make a small intro about yourself to our readers and uh, we could start from there. My name is Jeff or Jiho. I'm a lifelong gamer and collector, so I grew up collecting insects and fossils and playing games. Now I'm a co-founder of Sky Mavis. We're the inventors of Axie Infinity and Ronin Network. Yeah, Axie is the number one NFT project of all time uh, by volume. It's actually recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records with over $4 billion in NFT trading volume. Yeah, we've also built Ronin, which is the best place to launch and grow uh, NFT Web3 games. Um, yeah, I'm the chief growth officer, so I'm known for doing a lot of things related to the community and helping, uh, you know, advise our products so that they grow faster and uh, doing, you know, marketing. So. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Jiho. Um, I know that you became a co-founder. You were not, as far as I know, in the project from the beginning. First, you were a big part of the community of the game, right? And then you somehow be became a co-founder. Yeah, I discovered Axie as a community member. And when it was quite, you know, quite in the early days, and when it were the, just maybe five, you know, 10 people or so in the Discord, um, but I fell in love with the project. I thought that the art was beautiful and amazing. Um, and I, I, you know, I had actually played CryptoKitties, which was like, you know, the first NFT project that got past at least 10,000 players. And so I, I was a CryptoKitty breeder. Um, and so, you know, I fell in love with the concept of the NFTs and I thought that they would revolutionize ownership and give property rights to people on the internet. And so when I found Axie, it was like, okay, this is the thing that I've been looking for. This is the thing that has the potential to bring crypto and Web3 to everyday people. And, and so you uh, become a community member and next day you wake up as a co-founder. <laughs> Can you? Yeah, I mean, I was one of the first uh, people to join the team. And, uh -huh. you know, it's, uh, that's, good. that's how things went. <laughs> uh but how does it happen because usually when the project so you uh entered the project when the game was only uh, in the development stage or it was already live i joined during the mint uh mm -hmm. so the, the original axi mint took two months and uh, from february to april of 2018 and yeah i joined in march so you know it was there was very little, there was a website and there was uh, an Axie Mint and there were maybe 10 people. So yeah, there, there are two original founders of Axie, Trung and Wasamune. They're both Vietnamese. Trung is an engineer 
and, and great at building things. And Masamune is an artist, right? So that's where the idea of what axes look like and all the lore. Um, yeah, he does, he does so much. So, mm -hmm. so you um, got to know them, you contacted them. Just the reason why I'm asking, I think it's very cool to be a co-founder of uh, such a huge project, but usually uh, the founders are the ones who were at the with the project from the very beginning, you know, and you just you were a fan of the project and then you come to the team and then you become a co-founder. So how did it happen? You just contacted uh, the guys, uh, the initial so I went in the discord. Yeah. I went in the discord and I just, you know, I, I knew that the project could help. They had a system actually for incentivizing people to help uh, by giving them axes uh, for, you know, keeping answering questions in the discord etc and then i yeah so i just started doing work and uh, you know uh, i one of the first things that i did was to help uh, localize the white paper into english um and yeah you know i just started doing the things that i could do to help the project and you know i think one month later in april or may of 2018 i you know i was living in new york at the time and then i packed up gave mm -hmm. my to my parents and i moved to all the way to vietnam from new york mm -hmm. and and you're living in, in vietnam now uh i i stopped living in vietnam during covid but yeah i spend a lot of time there so okay. i live in the states okay okay um so and after that you you started doing some things and uh, then the initial founders they said oh jiho is so cool please uh, be a co-founder or how did it happen or or, or or you went for a beer or how did you because usually projects have employees but these employees they never become co-founders um yeah it was just a very natural process mm -hmm. and also the keep in mind that at that time axie infinity it was only axie there was no sky mavis right so mm -hmm. i guess it was maybe when sky mavis was founded and that you know i maybe became a formal co-founder but i don't remember i don't really care about titles to be honest okay okay so uh thanks for sharing it because i was really curious on this part of the story and uh, this was your first job so you didn't work in any web3 projects before <clears throat> as far as i understood uh yeah i i was you know before this i was uh, running i was running uh and managing like a small hedge fund with my friends uh -huh. um, and now yeah, i was i was i was working at a startup uh, oh, okay so at, yeah a startup for like automated basically like uh actually it was like an ai enhanced resume uh creation platform so yeah actually like into ai like way before <laughs> Every, so, this was because this was in 20 you know 17. so so now this startup could raise lots of investment because i think all the ai startups are getting lots of investment now <laughs> i mean it's still, it's still a good idea to be honest it's yeah. still something that's needed because everyone has really ugly resumes mm -hmm. basically i went to a good school i went to a school uh i went to a school in the states called yale and at yale like everyone has the same resume uh, all the CVs, like it's the same template mm -hmm. um, and they all look good, and, but it's actually given to us by the school. So basically what we did was we just created this platform to allow anyone to have that template. So it looks like that they're an Ivy League student in terms of the resume formatting. Yeah, because we, we thought that was like an unfair secret or something like this is how you're actually supposed to format your, format your resume. Sounds very cool. So I, I'm looking through many resumes uh, because of my work, and I agree that most of them look very ugly. <laughs> so the the yeah, idea. Like, to me, it's is... like you know, some people were using pictures, like really big font, uh, et cetera. Right. So it's like it's there's only one way to do it. Like, <laughs> anyways. Sure. Sure, on. sure. And you're responsible now in Axie for uh, community or you do something else as a gross? Uh, mm, so I'm, I'm technically the chief chief growth officer. So, yeah. Mavis. yeah, that involves a lot of different things right? from community to go to market to announcement amplification, uh, social media, um, you know, creators and influencers and content. Yeah. Uh, right to, even like paid media and press, yeah. So, 
So basically, you are responsible for many marketing activities. Yeah, I would say, but it's like, so I, I'm technically the head of the growth team. And what is the difference between a marketing team and mm -hmm. a growth team? A growth team can actually influence product decisions, whereas a marketing team, they just take what they get and, and, and roll it out. It's very cool because I have, I'm also into marketing. I run a marketing agency for Web3 and I will have lots of questions on marketing and growth of Axie Infinity. It's very interesting. So basically, can you please tell me what's going on with Axie now? Uh, because um, the, the last year was hard on crypto. It's a bear market and especially it was hard on um, Web3 games. So, for example, I know the guys who were telling me like we had the revenue, for example, of five million and now we have 500,000. So the revenue dropped 10 times because of uh, the market. So What's going on with Axie? Do you feel this uh, bear market and do you do something to cope with it? I mean, bear markets are normal for us, right? We were born during a bear market, so it can't be harder than 2018 or 2019 where nobody cared or even knew what a Web3 game was. Um, nobody knew what an NFT was or a Web3 game. Every, it, literally, there was maybe a few hundred people in the space. Now there are around 250,000 uh, blockchain gamers. Around 150,000 of them are uh, Axie players, and uh, so it's like we have 70% market share. So we feel like we're you know we're in a good spot, and you know in the bear market it's more about like consolidating your market share, um, you know, and culling the weak from the the herd, right? Like bear markets are for evolution, right? They they make the space stronger by killing all the weak people and uh, projects and making them leave the space. They they'll probably return later when things things are better, but um, that's actually needed uh, to concentrate capital and talent um, and users within the, the most quality and in the, the best products and the best projects. So yeah, to us, you know, bear markets are fun uh, because we like to survive and we're very competitive. So to me, it's very fun actually to see, you know, <laughs> all of these competitors that came in and were very like cocky and confident to be uh, quite, to be struggling. Of course, it's hard for us as well, and it's hard for our community as well. And um, but it's it's it, I think it builds character. Uh, it also gives us time to build product and get ready for the next cycle. So one of the things about Axie last cycle, right, was that there was no way for people were just breeding more. They were breed, they were playing, they were breeding, and there was just constant supply increase, horizontal supply increase of the Axie population. We didn't have any way to basically put your time, your effort, your love, crafting materials into an Axie to progress it vertically, to evolve it, right? Uh, why do people fall in love with their Pokemon? Because they play with one, you know, a few Pokemon and progress them to the highest level and they actually get to see them evolve. Whereas in Axie last cycle, that was not the case. And so that's actually something that we're working on right now is Axie evolution, part evolution. Um, and we actually think that this will be really important for balancing the economy and making sure that when the next cycle comes, that we can have a balance between basically supply, Axie supply and Axie demand. The issue actually what, what, what happened last cycle basically was more demand, more supply. Uh, whereas we can create a system where more demand equals less supply or actually uh, basically a, a constant or steady supply. Yeah, it's, it's maybe something like uh, with Ethereum network when there is uh, lots of demand, uh, gas fees uh, go to the skies, but because the amount of network supply is still not as big as demand, right? Did I get you right, the idea of what you're working kind of, on? Yeah. So imagine if you can rate like, uh, yeah, imagine being able to burn axes. And right? mm -hmm. we call it release. Really so you burning axes to get crafting materials to then upgrade the mouth, the horn, the mm -hmm. back. That type of a system is actually really needed, mm -hmm. and we didn't have it in place. Uh, so, so that you know, that's on the axie side, right? Is like you know, there are actually over fifteen axie games that are playable right now. Many of them are built by the community, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, there are over you know around one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, monthly active players. We believe that's around 70% of the Web3 gaming population. Yeah. And we're also, you know, working on working on part evolution. So that's on the Axie side. And um, mm -hmm. I think what's also really important 
exciting and important to understand is what's happening on the Rune inside of the ecosystem. What's happening on the Rune inside side of the ecosystem? So with so basically with Ronin, right? Ronin was a is the scaling solution that we built to get Axie to millions of players. And we realized, hey, that it actually works for Axie. Let's make this available for other Web3 gaming developers. And what we're seeing is that since we're actually battle tested, since we're the only team that's actually achieved scale in Web3 gaming, the best and most talented Web3 gaming developers that are up and coming want to work with us. They want our advice. They want warm introductions to our community members. Uh, you know, they want to build on Ronin because it's actually battle tested and has the different tools that they need for success when making and launching a Web3 game. So that's another thing, right? So we just onboarded Pixels, CyberCon has just held a mint that went really well. So now Ronin is becoming about way more than Axie. It's becoming this entire ecosystem of different games and experiences leveraging the same technology that allowed Axie to go super viral with everyday people. Thanks. Um, going back to the bear market, I liked what you said that you like the bear market because you like to survive. Uh, maybe you could give some advice uh, to a Web3 project. Bear market is more fun. Like, to be <laughs> honest, come on. Like, the, bear, the bull market is like uh, hectic. Like, uh, everyone is like getting so crazy. P people are reaching out to you. People are reaching out to your friends and family trying to get in touch with you. Like, I really didn't like that about the bull market was like, everyone wanted to be my friend. Everyone was acting fake. Um, you know, what's the point of money if everyone is acting fake and uh, trying to get shit from you? So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, like the bear market, I actually prefer um, it's it's a little bit it's more quiet. Uh, you can focus more on you know product development, which is actually you know my favorite aspect actually. So um, yeah, you know I think bear markets are good. Like you know people you know you just have to have kind of a stoic mentality about it. Uh, do you have some timeline inside the uh, the team so when the bear market will end? So because you have some some plans for product development, how do you plan it? Because when I suppose suppose when the bull market starts, all you just start to run and run and run to to, to meet <laughs> the demand, and before that you are doing the development. How do you plan it? Yeah, I mean that's you know that's one of the things we think about. Like, what are the things that we need to build to be in place? To be ready for the next uh, cycle. Um, in terms of like timing, you know, obviously, you know, that's that's a tricky uh, business. But I don't know, like, you know, the this, the happening is always like a, a easy thing to 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 know when it is, uh, right? And it's usually like things start to heat up maybe six months after the happening, right? So do do you think uh, that in six months we can help uh, the bull market or not? What's six your... months after the, if i had to predict you you're asking me like i would say six months after the happening okay. so the happening is in april 2024 okay. mm -hmm. so october 2024 so maybe yeah maybe a year from now okay okay good idea for headline <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kidding i'm just kidding so i know that when Axie started you didn't have um android app or, or ios app uh, for iphone and uh, you were just a browser game and the way you grew and the way you reached uh, such a big uh, amount of community it's absolutely marvelous because usually people are playing on their mobile devices uh, they're not uh, of course there, there are people who play uh, games on their computers but these are mainly triple a games like witcher or something and people who, who play more simple games are on, on mobile devices how did you managed to get such a huge audience to play the game without a, a mobile app? We didn't. Um, so when we were only a browser game, originally we only had a few hundred players. Okay. Uh, so then we realized, hey, we need to make a mobile app. Uh, so we actually distributed a mobile app through an APK. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, you know, we had, mo I think we, you know, we had, I think around 80% of our players use Android devices. Mm -hmm um to play so it's really important and that's i i think that's really an important part of our an important part of our story 
is that Axie can be played on the most accessible device in the world, mm -hmm. right? You don't need to have a fancy gaming computer. Like to me, it's like ridiculous when people think that, oh, like these mass adopted Web3 games are going to be, you know, play are going to require very high specifications and powerful computers mm -hmm. that hasn't worked. We're more, we're more bullish on like Asian and uh, emer uh, Latam and emerging market audiences playing blockchain games on mobile phones. That's the, that's where the demand is. Um, you know, I think people who are, you know, trying to, yeah, you know, that's, that's where the demand to actually play uh, is coming from. Sure, sure. Uh, I understand. You know, I'm not a player myself, but I own a, one of the media I own writes about games, not only Web3 games, Web2 games. So I have uh, uh, lots of journalists writing about games. And but I'm really curious about X Infinity that when you look at it from the first side, it's basically nothing special. Yeah, there are many games like with. Uh, something similar in the concept or or, or the, the graphics is not like wow they're it's just not, all, it, they're, those it, are just copies of yeah. you know okay like just like there's only one bitcoin there's only one ethereum there's okay. only one axie infinity okay in crypto in crypto the first thing is what wins mm -hmm. right in crypto network effects are far more powerful uh, than in other industries even because only basically because it's like a market and things that are markets tend to go towards monopoly and so, yeah, you know, right now I would say that Ronin has basically, you know, usually how do you de define a mo monopoly? Usually like over 75% market share is, is monopoly. And right now around 75% of all blockchain gamers are uh, Ronin gamers, Axie players, um, right? Axie players plus the gamers that are playing the rest of the games on Ronin is around 75% market share. So or even higher. So I would say that right there, it's close to Monopoly. Okay, that's very cool. Uh, how do you make uh, the Web3 game sticky? Like stick, you know, that that's, the people want to play it again and again. What's the secret? And mm -hmm. that they're not leaving it. I think, well, community, people play games for really long times because their friends play them. <laughs> like for, for me, uh, I played World of Warcraft and you know, to me, I didn't actually like playing World of Warcraft. Uh, it was actually very addicting and like, it's a constant grind. But why did I do it is because like, I did it for my guildmates. And uh, so I think that's one of the important things is like right, creating uh, games that go well with for making friends and that have social features or that have guild features um, that bring games that bring people together. And of course, you know, you need want to have a level of immersion and, and skill people games that get people into skills flow state. So what is flow state flow state happens when you challenge someone at the edge of their abilities. So basically, when something is not too hard, but not too easy. That's actually the definition of flow state, which game di designers actually use instead of fun, because fun is not scientific. And um, so it's like, okay, yeah, how do you maximize the amount of time that your users are in flow state in this game? And this is actually one of the reasons that we originally started giving out tokens, right? Is because as you basically, the more people that are queuing at a, at the, at a single time, the better match you're going to get. You're going to get a faster match against someone at your skill level. Right? And that actually makes the game more fun. Because maybe you're 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 from your Ukraine, maybe you know about chess, right? Like if you play chess against like your grandpa, who's like so much better than <laughs> you, like something it's, like it's, this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, playing playing chess against someone who's so much better than you, it's not fun. But playing against someone at your skill level is fun, right? So that's the same experience, but the the social aspect or who you're playing against actually determines the amount of immersion that you're having, right? Yeah. I play tennis, so in <laughs> tennis, tennis like... it's uh, uh, the same. It's uh, no fun to play against somebody who is uh, weaker than you or stronger than you. But it's cool. No, it's cool to play somebody against somebody who is a little bit better than you. This way, you are challenged, you know, to to grow. So I understand what you're talking about. Um, you are responsible for Axie community. Um, I understand that community, like community management, is such a big domain 
you know but maybe you could give some advice for people who are uh, doing web3 games and looking at you as uh, the biggest uh, most su successful web3 game what is important to uh, grow a very good and very loyal community i think like constantly repeating why things are important telling people why things are important leading with your values you know with axie everyone knows that it's about constant improvement you know uh, self-improvement product improvement and futuristic ideals and introducing crypto to everyday people right so constantly repeating mm -hmm. why we're here um, i think that's important i think also coming up with like proper incentive systems um so it's the cool thing about crypto is that we have tokens and incentives that we can use so figuring out ways to measure engagement for example and and uh give out different rewards for doing things like managing the discord community creating content um, making it so that the people who are helping out can justify it to themselves and their friends and family um yeah, you know, I, I always see it as like, you know, building a movement versus marketing a game. Um, so, you know, what are the great, what are the great political campaigns of all time done? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, one of the ways that I actually worked, you know, uh, doing advisory for political campaigns actually before I came into Web3 mm -hmm. as well. Okay. The, the, it's very unusual and interesting experience to have for a, a co-founder. Okay. Discord is your main channel, right? Uh, to communicate with community. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I would say so we have Discord, we have Twitter, we have Facebook groups that have, you know, so we have around 650,000 people in Discord, we have a million on, uh, sorry, 880,000 on Twitter. Uh, you know, we have uh, millions of emails. Um, so, you know, it's a combination of all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you see one channel, channel to be the most important or they all are uh, to, to communicate with audience? I think they're, I mean, they're all important. I think the thing that is important is the thing that you do that nobody else does. Uh, so, you know, I think we use email a lot more than mm -hmm. uh, most of your projects because we actually get people's email when they play Axie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you send them emails about something new happening in the game or, or how to, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so like a newsletter about the project. Mm -hmm. constant, constant updates. I think okay. we send out like 10 emails a week on average. Please tell me something cool about what, about what you're working on now that you will be launching soon. Maybe <laughs> some exclusive thing to share. Yeah, I mean, so I think the, the main thing that is, uh, that I'm super excited about related to Axie at least is a part evolution, right? So it's like gonna be evolving your axes using tokens uh, and time and effort and skill. I think that's really, really important for getting us to the next level. Uh, dynamic NFTs, you know, one other thing that sets Axie apart and what we've done apart is that we actually invent things. We're the trendsetter. Uh, so, you know, when I think about the next bull market and what it will look like for NFTs, I see like dynamic evolving NFTs uh, that change over time uh, as people put more uh, time and effort into them so so i think that's going to be really important nfts that evolve um okay. and axes, axes will basically become digital collectibles that evolve as you play with them right so digital collectibles that evolve as you play with them that's some going to be something that the world has actually never really seen at least on a mass scale and the cool thing about axes you know we can take different ideas that we find is interesting and roll them out to uh, a huge audience. So it's actually an interesting, you know, uh, testing for Ethereum developers because actually like Ethereum developers have made like really interesting, so a few really interesting use cases for dynamic NFTs, but it's only like a few dozen people actually using them. Um, so the, the thing about Axie is like, we can take interesting ideas that we see out in the wild and then roll them out uh, to tons of people. And really that's the moment that the invention actually happens when people are actually using it. Dynamics NFTs. Okay, it, it's very interesting. And what do you think about NFTs, uh, like usual ones? Will they uh, go up again? Because now some people say that NFTs are dead or, or, or they will be alive during the next bull market. What do you think? 
yeah, I mean, you know, it can't be worse than 2018 and 2019. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. It's like, you know, I've been, I've been here when there were literally maybe 100 daily users of OpenSea. I was, uh, actually, we had more users than OpenSea at a certain point in 2019, I would say. Um, so, yeah, you know, I've been here when there were less than a thousand people in the entire NFT space. Uh, you know, now there are at least hundreds of thousands. So to me, it's like exponential progress. It just depends. If you came in, crypto class of 2021 is wrecked, obviously. Like, that's okay. good. Like, that's that was me in 2019, 2020. You know, I was living in my parents' basement. Like, you have to go through pain before you can make it, basically. Um, do you think that... You you, you said you have to go to, uh, through pain uh, before you can make it. But uh, uh, I think that even when you made it, you sometimes have to go through pain. Like you said, for example... Pain, pain is good. Pain yeah. is good. That, that is undeniable. Yeah. So And, and sometimes... Uh, because some people think that when you made it, that's all you made it. But then you, you still have to evolve and evolving is pain, you know. And bear market is also can be painful. Okay, uh, if you would have launched a Web3 game now, uh, to, to which niche, to which concept who, who would you look? You know, I think it's something very nostalgic. So, yeah, I would like to make like an Axie, you know, farm simulation game or something like that using like pixel art. Like imagine like Axie in Stardew Valley, for example, uh, with like nostalgic art, something like that, I think would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And... and nostalgic from which uh, age from f f f from yeah, like which time yeah, like 90s 90s so from 90s okay sounds in in interesting i talk a lot with uh, web3 game uh, producers founders and um, the thing that everybody's talking about that web3 gaming started as uh, being about earning money but uh, it should be not about earning money it should be about fun because actually fun, fun is what uh, uh, makes people stick and uh, because money is is uh, one thing i don't know if it's about uh? yeah i don't know if it's necessarily just about fun like, okay. you know, if, I'm never going to say the thing that everyone is saying. Everyone cannot be right. Okay. <laughs> that, that's not how you win. You win by being uh, right about something that everyone else is wrong about, right? So to me, it's actually not just about fun. It's about emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always think about, like, you know, the way to balance these economies is through emotion, right? Maybe through, through uh, things like the sins, right? Greed, wrath, gluttony, envy, right? It's like, I need that thing, right? Like... So be all of these emotions expressed in a game and getting people to spend for emotional reasons that will help balance these economies, making economic opportunities for the people that earn. People don't necessarily just spend on something that's the most fun. The most fun things in life are actually free, right? Uh, so, it, but th people actually spend because they feel like triggered <laughs> in some emotional way. Mm -hmm. Building games that play up to that, I think is, is the key, right? And what kind of emotions can uh, the and should the game trigger? Because emotions are this uh, are different. Some are negative, some are positive. Some is fear, some is happiness. So, with which emotions do you work usually? Yeah, I've, things like envy. Right? It's like, oh, wow, that person has that. Like, <laughs> I want something better. Right? Uh, like that's what kind of the collectors. Right? Like. Uh, why do people collect, right? It's a source of pride. It's a source of envy. And it's, a, you know, it's, uh, it gets, it gets them friends, right? People want to be around people who have <laughs> expensive stuff and rare stuff, right? So that's what, that's one example. Okay. Okay. Uh, good. Maybe something else you want to talk about to the audience and I didn't ask about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would just say to follow me uh, on Twitter. I'm J I H O Z underscore Axie. Mm -hmm. uh, check out Running Network. Check out Axie Infinity. And yeah, we just onboarded Pixels as well. Pixels was the biggest game on Polygon, and they just moved over to Ronin. And so yeah, you know, definitely uh, stay in touch. And you know, I know it's a bear market, and it can be hard. It can be very boring, mm -hmm. uh, but. Find some reason to, you know, to stay involved, to keep up with what's happening, uh, because that's going to end up putting you in a better spot um, once things start to improve with the macro climate. 
thanks a lot uh, for sharing. Yeah, and uh, to everybody who were listening to us, uh, we were with Jiho uh, from Axie Infinity today. Please subscribe to my YouTube uh, called Creators and uh, to our social accounts. I'm Vera Warren from Creators Agency and from Vital B Crypto Community. Uh, thanks, Jiho. I wish you a nice day and uh, all the best to Axie team. Looking forward to new cool things you will be launching, launching soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.